Hello everyone, Dr. Maiden here with another video. This is going to be focusing on the theme that I've been doing of reading advice. So really wanting to work with my students as best I can on better tips for how to read, how to read more efficiently and how to feel more prepared for class. And so the theme of this particular video is going to be how to most effectively read journal articles, political science journal articles. Okay. So very similar to the um, video that I did, I can, I can link it down below, the video on Read Smarter Not Harder. A lot of that general advice applies to when it comes to reading journal articles. I'd say the first thing when it comes to reading a journal article is prepare to read the journal article. So the big thing with any journal article is skim it. Start by skimming it, and I think you should do this with everything you read, but journal articles especially. Start by skimming it before you read because journals can really vary in terms of the design of the article, how they lay things out, do they use headings, do they use subheadings, what are the different parts of the article. That's important to know before you go in so that you can frame the way you're thinking about the article. Okay, so skim it first, look at page length, look at what type of data are they using, is there a lot of charts, a lot of graphs, a lot of maps, that can, that can slow you down. If you're thinking, I've got 15 minutes, I'm gonna take a look at this. It might take you a little bit longer if you're having to sit down and piece apart, okay, what is this graph trying to tell me? What are these statistics? You know, you just need to know that going in. What is the workload here that I am about to pursue with this article? And the thing that I wanna say um, in, this order, in this video, I'm not only going to walk through kind of pieces of an article, but I'm actually, I have an article that we can walk through together. So let's start with just saying, what are the pieces of an article? And again, this is political science. It's very similar across the board with a lot of fields right now in social sciences, but I'm talking particularly with my expertise in political science. What can you expect? Non-theory, I should add, non-theory political science journals. What can you expect to see? So in most cases, obviously there's gonna be a title. Most journals anymore will have an abstract. An abstract is gold. An abstract is your best friend. An abstract is typically 100 to 300 words long, and it is supposed to be an executive summary of that article. So everything you need to know about the article, what's the puzzle, What's the data they're using? What are their findings? All of that should be in the abstract alone. That's the first thing. You can often see an abstract before you even pull up the article. So if you're going through a library database, you can see the title, the name of the journal, the authors of it, and the abstract. So in some cases, you don't even have to dive into the article. You don't have to download it. If you can skim through the abstract and be like, mm, this doesn't fit the project that I'm doing, or you can look at it and say, oh, this sounds perfect. I'll download this, see what it's about, you know, and make sure it follows through with what the abstract says it's about. Okay, so abstract is first thing up. Another thing that can be useful very often right under the abstract is keywords. So the keywords will flag for you things like, this is about voting behavior, this is about local governance, this is about Africa, there's a case study of Japan, Right? You can be, um, as academics, we're creative with the way we use keywords to flag our articles for you so that you can be looking and seeing if you're interested in it from there. So abstract keywords are very first things searchable before you even dive into the article in most cases. Then the general overview of an article, there's only a couple of pieces to an article, really. I any article, any journal that's publishing articles, there's only a couple of pieces. So there's an introductory section, the introductory section should be covering the puzzle. What's the puzzle? What's the question? It should be covering the data that you use, the results that you find, and the why should we care? What is this adding to the discipline? What is this adding to political science, to your subfield within political science, to public policy makers? Why should we care? Why does it matter that you have this finding? And in some cases, you can even do the what can we do with it? All of that, and this might, this might seem counterintuitive if you're listening to this, all of that goes in the introduction. The first couple of paragraphs are lining all of that out for you. What are we doing? What's the puzzle? What's the question? What data do we find? How do we find our answer? Why does it matter? 
that's the intro. And you can also have in the intro overview of the paper. So the paper is organized in three parts. One, two, three. Clear as a bell exactly what you're expecting to find in this article, okay? Typically from an intro section, you go into background, or we'll often call this the literature review section, and this is where scholars are tipping their hat to everyone that's gone before them in the field of voting behavior or in the field of civil wars, and you're outlining where is the field now? What do we know about civil war onset right now? What are the scholarship is saying? What is it saying? So you have a literature, a background section that's outlining everything that has come to that point. And it's showing clearly, this is the hole I'm intending to fill. This is the way I am adding to this theory. I'm creating more robustness for this theory, right? Literature section, liter or literature review section, background section is the first thing after the intro. So why do we care? Then depending on what's going on, you might have like a hypothesis section or you know the expectation section. What do we expect to find here? What are our hypotheses? What's the question, the puzzle? That will be the next thing. And so you'll dive into what is this puzzle? What, what is the question we're seeking to answer? What is the hypothesis that we're seeking to prove? That's next. So literature review, background, the puzzle, the question, the hypothesis. Next thing tends to be research design. How am I going to answer that question? What's my research design? So you'll outline everything in terms of what methods I'm going to use, what country I was in, how many people I talked to, et cetera, et cetera. All the research design gets light, laid out. Fourth thing then down this list is results. So it's very straightforward. Again, I am going to provide in much more detail than I did up in the intro what the results are. So I had this question, we had this puzzle, the results are going to piece it out and give us the clear, um, detailed explanation of what happened and what we're expecting to see. And did we actually see that? Okay. So the results is where you're going to get all of your math. It's where you're going to get a lot of, if it's qualitative, you're going to get information from interviews, quotes, all that type of thing. Then the last section typically is discussion conclusion. Sometimes people break those out and they'll do discussions separate from conclusion. A lot of times they'll just click them together. So discussion conclusion, again, from the intro is just saying, why should we care about this? What is this adding? Now that we know this, what direction can we go? Why does this matter? For policymakers, why does it matter? For scholars, why does it matter? What are some of the challenges we encountered in our research that can sometimes come into the discussion section of, we know this is imperfect because we were only able to gauge people living in Southern Mali. We really need to expand to get people living in Northern Mali, that type of thing. You're very clear with limitations of your study that can come in a discussion section. Okay. And then the conclusion is just next steps, uh, just kind of finishing it out, right? Finishing out the article. This is why this matters. See a uh, recap. I told you that I was going to prove this and this is what I proved. This is why it matters. Next steps, the end. Okay, so that is pretty much every journal article you would ever read in a nutshell. It's abstract keywords followed by an intro, followed by a background lit review, followed by some type of setting up of the research puzzle, the question, the hypothesis, followed by research design and methods, followed by the results, followed by a discussion conclusion. Just click, 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 click. So if you know that going in, you are ready to read any article and know the pieces of it, even if the subheadings change somewhat, you have an expectation of, I know what each of these is doing, I know the direction this is moving, and it makes journals really skimmable for you. It makes journals feel very familiar to you. You know what you're looking for, you know what to expect, okay? And so I'm gonna give you an example right now. If you want, you can stop here and you can be on your way. Goodbye, have a great day. I'm going to go a little bit longer though with this video because I'm actually going to take a, an article. I'm going to link it down below. The article is there. Take a second, pull it up. It should be a PDF for you. Pull up this article and let's look through it together. Okay. All right. So I have my article here. I've got it printed out. This article is from Comparative Political Studies. It was just published in 2020 and we'll start with title. How 
do voters discriminate against women candidates? Experimental and qualitative evidence from Malawi. The title there tells you so much about what's going on. It tells you what type of data they're going to use. It's experimental and it's qualitative. It tells you the case study. It's Malawi. And it gives you the question, how and or do voters discriminate against women candidates? So we already know a heck of a lot about this article just from the title. Then you go down to the abstract. The abstract here, again, like I said, tells you everything you can expect from this article. So you can start by just reading the abstract and feel like, I know what you're about to tell me. I, I understand the usefulness of this and I can keep reading if I want to, but if this is all I need, I can either decide this is a good fit for my research, this isn't a good fit for my research and move on or dive in, okay? So the first thing here, intro, it's as clear as day. This is a great article for this because it's as clear as day. There's what, about five chap or five paragraphs here. It's what's the puzzle? What do we find? How do we find it? Why should we care? Outline of the paper. It's just boom, boom, boom. Each of those paragraphs is addressing those issues. What's the background? What do we care? How do we find it? What's the puzzle? Outline of the paper. Okay. You move to the next subheading, or technically it's the very first subheading in this paper, it's expectations and hypotheses. To begin, we expect voters will blank, 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 blank. Okay, so it's all about hypotheses. What's the puzzle? What's the question? What are we seeking to answer? These are our expectations. Flip a couple pages and you get to the context. Malawi, Malawi's local elections. So this is why this case country? Why this? Okay, so they're outlining for us, why should we care about Malawi? Why did you pick Malawi when you could have picked anything to be studying do voters discriminate against women candidates? Okay, so this is a nice section here, just a couple of paragraphs long. Why should we care about Malawi and elections in Malawi? Next thing up, page 608, research design, clear as day. This is our research design, that's the heading. Then you get subheadings where it explains, this is our survey experiment. This is our candidate biographical data information. This is our candidate focus group information. Boom, boom, boom. Next heading up, results, experimental results. So they say, we did this experiment. We said we'd do an experiment. We said in the title we'd do an experiment. We reiterated it in the abstract. We reiterated it in the intro. Now here we are, I'm giving you the full results, experimental results. You flip to the next one. There's a couple of charts and graphs here. Next one, biographical and focus group results. I told you there would be qualitative evidence in the title. I kept telling you there would be qualitative evidence. I told you why we should have qualitative evidence. Here's the results, okay? We keep flipping. We flip a couple of pages. We get to this lovely heading called discussion and conclusion. And then they go in to discuss the findings, why they're relevant, what they're related to, why it's important that we're doing this type of research to begin with, and they conclude. They conclude with future steps, what it demonstrates, some of the challenges, and what people can do with this, whether you're in the policy world or the social science world. Then there's some nice acknowledgements, declaration of conflicting interests, funding. It's all, how long were we doing that? Three minutes. That was three minutes of me just talking out loud and saying, read the title, read the abstract, and literally everything in this article supports the title in the abstract. Boom, 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 boom. So if you can imagine how much quicker you could be going through your articles as you're reading them, if you just know what you're looking for, know what to look for, and you will speed up this process for yourself, okay? Um, I'm going to make another video uh, soon-ish that's gonna be focusing more on what to do when there are no headings and subheadings because that is a challenge it's a challenge especially in political theory it's a challenge in some journals of international relations most political science journals are doing a system where there's headings and subheadings and there's this very lovely clear empirical design you don't get that as much with theory articles and international relations articles but it's part of political science so i'm going to do a separate video that discusses how to actually um, organize and coordinate your reading process 
when you're dealing with something that doesn't have headings and subheadings. Okay, so that's all for now about reading journal articles. I hope this helps you start reading faster, start reading more efficiently, and uh, you know, stop wasting your own time uh, with just trying to do too much when you sit down to read these journal articles. Okay, so for those of you in class, I will see you in class.